Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin-Smith. Tonight, France's president meets with the grandchildren of an Algerian independence figure that he admits for the first time that France had murdered in 1957. Authorities had claimed that Ali Boumengel had killed himself. Also a top sponsor of the South African production of the reality show Love Island pulls out of the production following outrage over the predominantly white cast in a country where 80% of people are black. And calling all virtual rangers, wherever you may be. To mark World Wildlife Day, an anti-poaching unit in South Africa has set up smartphone surveillance in a nature reserve and is inviting anyone with an internet connection to help look out for endangered species. But for the first time, France has admitted that the country's soldiers murdered Algerian independence figure Ali Boumengel and then covered up his death in 1957. French President Emmanuel Macron has revealed that the, law, what, the lawyer was tortured and killed. Authorities had previously claimed that he committed suicide. It's taken generations for Ali Boumengel's family to hear the truth of his death from the French presidency. For his grandson, Mehdi, Emmanuel Macron's admission is momentous, not just for his relatives, but also for the thousands who have lived through the same atrocities. The way the President of the Republic addressed us gave me hope. Personally, I experienced it as a courageous stance and a step towards truth. But on the streets of Algiers, the move has been met with scepticism. But after the publication of a government commissioned report from French historian Benjamin Stora, former Algerian fighters have demanded that France also apologize for these crimes. Some, however, feel that saying sorry is not the way forward on the path to Franco-Algerian reconciliation. Either there's a reciprocal desire to appease, or in Algeria's case, they continue to instrumentalize this story to legitimize the basis of the National Liberation Front's power. The legitimacy of the Algerian ruling party has been destabilized since the start of the Hirak protest movement two years ago. The National Liberation Front has clung to its pro-independence past to justify its grip on power over the country today. In Algeria, the commemoration of the colonial period and the Algerian war, which was launched in parallel with the Stora report, now, Kenya, Rwanda, Senegal and Lesotho became the latest African nations to receive their first delivery of COVID-19 vaccines under the WHO's COVAX scheme. It helps low- and middle-income countries source doses in the global race for shots. World supply is very limited and some richer countries have been accused of hoarding stock. The South African version of the reality show Love Island has sparked fierce criticism after viewers accused it of lacking in diversity because it selected too few black contestants amongst the 10 hopefuls. Many viewers called for formal objections to the Broadcasting Complaints Commission, saying that the casting doesn't reflect the country's demographics. A top sponsor has already pulled out of the production. Jane Flanagan tells us more. Local sponsors have withdrawn their support this week for Love Island, South Africa, in a row over a lack of diversity. The reality show is a British invention and throws 10 attractive singletons together in a luxury villa and viewers watch as they pair off. Uh, the winner of the series can find true love and also win 60,000 euros. But when South Africa unveiled its first 10 contestants this week, viewers were quick to point out that of the 10, six were white. Now, South Africa's census has 8% uh, of its population categorized as white and 80% categorized as black African, certainly not uh, facts that were reflected in this week's program. Now, makers of the show have said that viewers must stick with it and that uh, as the current cohort have voted off, that the new contestants would be much more reflective of the population of South Africa and that uh, they shouldn't boycott the show and they should stick with it. But nevertheless, 
Analysts have pointed out that this is just a mere reflection. The fact that this could go to air without the makers even seeing that this could cause some sort of row really reflects a lack of transformation in South Africa, even 25 years or more after the end of apartheid. And that actually, rather than being a rainbow nation, South Africa really remains very untransformed. James Lanigan there for us. Now, former Ivorian president Laurent Bagba still casts a shadow over his country's politics. He's now living in Brussels after being forced out of office before being charged and acquitted of war crimes in The Hague nearly a decade ago. Legislative elections are due in Ivory Coast this weekend and members of an opposition faction still loyal to him plan on running. Our team reports. Yupugon is Abidjan's most populated constituency. The historic heartland of Laurent Bagbo's FPI has been controlled by Alassane Ouattara's ruling RHDP party ever since Bagbo's arrest in 2011. After 10 years of boycotting elections, the former president's supporters are returning to the political arena, much to the delight of some local residents. I think it's good for the of democracy and the peace in Côte d'Ivoire. All the parties opposing participate to the elections. It's totally normal and it's very good. If it can continue like this, it would be good. At the local campaign headquarters, the six opposition candidates have come together to plan their strategy. Orico Nambedier's PDCI and the pro-Bagbo wing of the FPI are standing on the same ballot. In a bid to retake Yupagon, they have recruited some big names, including Michel Bagbo, son of ex-president Laurent Bagbo. The rapprochement between the PDCI and the FPI. But it is here an opportunity historic. With this coalition electoral, Nous avons la possibilité d'avoir la majorité à l'Assemblée nationale. Et on ne peut pas laisser passer cette opportunité. The name Bagbo carries weight in Yupogon. Gilbert Kafana Kone, the incumbent mayor and MP for the constituency, who is also a government minister, is keen to maintain RHDP control of the area. For him, it's unthinkable that Yupogon becomes a pro Bagbo stronghold once again. Attendons le 6 mars pour donc. Vérifier cela. Ce qui est sûr, c'est que Yopo n'appartient à personne en, en particulier. Le match est intéressant que si vous avez en face des adversaires de taille. Donc, euh, nous sommes totalement confiants. Nous les respectons, mais nous sommes confiants. In Yopogon, the contest will be hard fought and the results closely scrutinized. Now, Wednesday marked World Wildlife Day. Parts of the continent have seen a surge in poaching as illegal hunters take advantage of the fall in tourism caused by the pandemic. Rangers at the Balule Nature Reserve in South Africa are part of a new scheme using a live stream set up on upcycled phones that allows people from all over the world to keep an eye on the park. If anyone sees anything that looks suspicious, they can report it. It's actually very soothing if you have a chance to check it out. I had it on in the background as I was writing the show, but this really does go beyond virtual tourism. It's about keeping endangered animals and their green spaces safe. So I'm joined now by Craig Spencer from the Black Mamba Anti-Poaching Unit. Craig, uh, so this new system that you guys have set up um, is in part in response to the rise in poaching that uh, the continent has seen uh, during the pandemic. Just how has the last year or so affected the amount of illegal hunting that you've seen in and around Kruger National Park? Yeah, thanks. Uh, it's a good question. We get that question quite a lot. And in fact, it's uh, been a bit of a double-edged sword. So we've seen, uh, you know, in our context in the in the greater Kruger National Park arena in South Africa, we've seen a sharp decline in rhino poaching in particular. And there's a number of reasons for that, including the fact that the international borders are closed and the supply and demand chain has therefore been interrupted. Uh, and also because, uh, you know, everybody was sent home. Nobody works in the park anymore except the essential services like the Black Mambas. So the poachers can't be successful unless they have somebody inside and those guys are gone. So they've become redundant to the poacher. But then the, the biggest threat to us now is bushmeat poachers, which is an indiscriminate killing machine because all those people sitting at home without work uh, must now provide for their families one way or another. Uh, you know, so that's that's become the next biggest challenge. And that's a local market. Mm -hmm. And so this this scheme is you're you're trying to to rope in you know as many eyes as possible to try and uh, keep those animals in the park safe. Just tell us a bit more about how the scheme works. 
Yeah, so, um, you know, we, we deploy uh, the black mambas and, and field rangers uh, on the landscape because we want to take advantage of their eyes and ears. Those are the senses that we need. But when the sun goes down and we lose the light uh, and the people get tired and what have you, then, um, you know, those senses are no longer effective. So with the Samsung technology, we've got two cameras permanently on the landscape at places that we know the poachers uh, use to penetrate uh, into the park. And then we've got one mobile unit on an old beaten up four by four that we go and park in a strategic place where we kind of assume from our uh, nine years of, of doing this work, there will be a good spot to watch the landscape. And that, that is like a, you know, the arms race is, is not with guns and bombs. The arms race with anti-poaching is actually with technology. So, you know, we kind of think that this is a false multiplier, adds a lot of value. Uh, that, that is a live feed from those cameras directly into the ops room gives the black mambas the upper hand so they can respond immediately if something is seen on the landscape. Greg, I, I believe you've actually got one of uh, the black mambas, which is an, actually an all-women's ranger team, with you. Um, is, is later available? Yes, he's yes. sitting right here. Later, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you on the spot here. Um, we heard a bit there about how um, the, the scheme is working, but you're one of the people who's literally, you know... Uh, out there patrolling day after day. Uh, do you think that using technology like this and having v viewers virtually join the watch will actually tangibly do much to help you? Yeah, I think uh, it's going to help us a lot because um, most of the time when we go out on our patrols, we check all the boundaries of Balule, but we need more us to help us uh, to see where the poachers are coming in from and where they are going out from. So um, having this uh, surveillance is also going to benefit us a lot. When we're not on duty, like walking in the reserve, we can still receive information of what is happening in the reserve, and then we'll be able to be active at the same time. Thank you so much. Uh, Leita McVeila there and Craig Spencer. Um, if you do have a chance and you want to take a, uh, take a turn looking out for the animals, uh, you can find the feed at wildlifewatch.com. Um, it really is quite fascinating and very soothing. So if you have a chance, do uh, join the watch if you can. That is though all we have time for, for Eye on Africa. Thanks for joining us and do so again. Take care. France 24, your economy explained. Liberté, égalité, actualité.